Well, Jeff Beck died of bacterial meningitis this week at the age of 78. Mm, Dr. Linda Yancey is an infectious disease specialist with Memorial Hermann and joins us this morning to talk more about the disease. Welcome and thanks for joining us, Dr. Yancey. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So many times when someone high profile dies, we learn a lot from that situation just so that we're better educated, we can understand what's going on. Can you explain and remind people what meningitis is? So meningitis is an infection of the lining around the brain and the spinal cord. It can range from a trivial illness to a fatal one, unfortunately. Is it bacterial or viral or, or can it be either? So lots of different organisms can cause meningitis. Viruses, bacteria, and even fungus can cause meningitis. So which one is more dangerous? Is it the viral one since they can't treat it with antibiotics like they could a bacterial one? Uh, ironically, viral meningitis tends to be the most mild form. Mm -hmm. While it can be serious, most of the time it causes a mild illness. Bacterial meningitis, however, is a rapidly progressing disease that can get very bad very quickly. So what would be some of the symptoms that, that would prompt you to say, you know what, I think I need to call my doctor here? So folks with bacterial meningitis are very sick. They tend to have high fevers, and a couple of alarm symptoms that we look out for are a stiff neck and what we call photophobia, which is pain when people are looking at bright lights. So a fever with a stiff neck or pain with looking at lights should prompt a visit to the emergency room immediately. Is it ever contagious? Sometimes it's contagious. The vast majority of the time it's not. If you have a loved one with meningitis, their care team will let you know if it's one of the contagious varieties and give you instructions on what to do from there. So what would be um, treatments then or, you know, different options like I, I assume some medicine in some cases? So bacterial meningitis we treat very aggressively, most of the time with three different antibiotics until we figure out exactly what is causing it. Viral meningitis, we have a couple of antivirals that we can use, but uh, antib antibiotics are the mainstay of treatment. Now when you say until you find out what's causing it in the first place, how do you go about figuring that out? I mean, you've got someone whose life's on the line and, and just a little time to figure it out. How, how does that process begin and what does that look like? So we start out with a spinal tap where we put a needle into the back and draw out some spinal fluid. That gives us some immediate results uh, telling us whether or not we have meningitis. Then we send that for culture and wait to see what grows. But we do not wait to start the antibiotics. They are started immediately. Okay, so if you have, um, I guess, any symptoms at all, mm -hmm. any suspicions that you might have, it, you really need to reach out to your doctor as soon as you can. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Yancey. It's good to see you again. Have a good weekend. <laughs> you too.